Question four in our short answer. Sulfur trioxide, SO3, is made by the reaction of sulfur dioxide and oxygen in the presence of a catalyst, according to this beautiful equation there. Um, nice to know that it's an, what's that? Exothermic reaction is, delta H is less than zero, so therefore it's exothermic. In a closed system, the presence of a catalyst, the reaction quickly achieves equilibrium, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to first of all find out what the equilibrium constant is before I even read any of this. So a mixture of two moles of sulfur dioxide and two moles of oxygen was placed in a four litre um, evacuated sealed vessel and kept at a standard 1000 degrees Kelvin until equilibrium, equilibrium was really reached. At equilibrium, the vessel was found to contain. That means we're using an ice table. So I-C-E. We're going to start off with sulfur dioxide, two of those, and oxygen, and two sulfur trioxide. Um, ice table, because we're starting off with something, we have an initial value, and we have an equilibrium value. So therefore, let's have a look. We're going to have two moles of that, and two moles of that, and we didn't have any of that because it was an evacuated sealed vessel, so it means evacuated didn't have anything to start with. Change, uh, no idea yet, but at equilibrium, I've got 1.66 moles of that. Notice these are all in moles, so therefore I'm keeping it consistent with in my ice table here as well. Sometimes I like to um, mess with your head and give you both concentration and moles and you have to deal with that. But anyway, moving on, plus 0 0.6, sorry, 1.66 in this change area, you can see it's increased by that. What does that mean? That means this has gone down by, in ratio, half this amount. So it's gone down by, what's half that? 0 0.83. And this one is gone down by, the ratio is 2 and 2, so therefore it's the same amount, 1.66. What does that mean for my equilibrium um, amounts? Well, because I don't want to get things wrong, I'm going to use my trusted calculator. 2 take away is 1.66. Uh, 2. 66 gives me 0 0.34 and then to take away 0.83 gives me 1.17 all those are moles as well which is nice to know we want to find an equilibrium constant here all right kc equals products concentration of so3 squared divided by my reactants concentration of SO2 squared times concentration of oxygen. Now, I need concentrations. This is where my four liters comes into play. So therefore, I need to find this into concentration. So my concentration to equilibrium is going to be equal to all these divided by four. So I'm going to take that number and divide that by four, and that's going to give me 0 0.2. 925, uh, 1.66 divided by 4 gives me 0 0.415. And then 0 0.34 divided by 4 gives me 0 0.085. So what I need to then do is bang all these numbers into this thing over here. So therefore, my sulfur trioxide will be 0 0.415 squared divided by my sulfur dioxide, which would be 0 0.085, bracket squared times by this guy, which will be 0 0.2925. Do that in my calculator. Um, this is a fun one. My LD calculator here is pretty basic, but if I put use brackets, I should be able to do this anyway. One, five, bracket. Where's my squared button? It's not looking too good at the moment. Divided by bracket. Alrighty. Bracket, 0 0.085, bracket squared, yes, times 0.2925, bracket, equals 81.4, all righty, I'm going to go back and look at my significant figures in a second here, so 81.5, um, and what have we got? Units for this. Molar squared divided by molar squared times molar 
equals molar to the negative one. Molar to the negative one. Significant figures. I've got three, 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 three significant figures across the board. I've got, so that means that is my answer. I've got three significant figures, one, two, three. So therefore, my answer is 81.5 molar to the negative one. Remembering I also think about the units um, when I do equilibrium constant calculations as well. That's a fun question. Um, but main thing is, I can see the fact that it was um, starting points and an equilibrium point. Start off with an ice table, clearly label it, um, show my change in my ratio and then substitute my um, equilibrium constant. Um, moving on, let's have a look at part B. A manufacturer of sulfur trioxide investigates blah, blah, blah. What changes would the manufacturer make to the temperature and volume of the system, so temperature and volume, in order to increase the percentage yield and justify your response for four beautiful marks? So percentage yield is all about Le Chat. Four marks suggest I need four clear dot points. And let's have a look at with Le Chat. What's going to favour my Ford reaction? So here, I'll start off with temperature. Here it is what I say. Um, delta H is less than zero, so therefore it's exothermic. So therefore to favour the exothermic, I need to decrease temp. So therefore down here, I'm going to first of all say I want to decrease my temperature. Now why, if I justify that, Le Chat um, says that um, a decrease in temp will favor the exothermic reaction as this partially opposes the lower temperature. And I've already written over two or more of my dot points, but that's fine. Another two dot points here. Alrighty. So next one is volume. So with volume, I've got three gas particles on this side and I've got two gas particles on that side because I know that changing volume, obviously it's gonna depend on how many particles are on either side. Having less particles on the product side means I need to squish them all together, so therefore I'll partially oppose it to go on that side. So I will decrease the volume. And again, Le Chat says that decreasing the volume will favor the side with less particles, aka the products. Therefore, again, these little therefore dots are really good. Therefore, increase the yield of, uh, what am I looking for? Sulfur trioxide. All right, probably in here, probably should talk about something about partially opposing as well. So um, increase that. The less particles, so particles will partially oppose, I'm not writing this very well, the um, increase in concent con concentration caused by the decrease. I'm going to explain this in volume. All right, that's a bit of a rambling sentence there, but the idea is that by decreasing the volume, you increase all the concentrations of everything. So therefore, the chat says we're going to try and partially oppose that increase in all concentrations by trying to get less particles, which is why we're going to favor that side there. 
Hopefully that makes sense, but you can see how as I've gone along, I've rambled a little bit at this point, but what I try to do is trying to kit in these keywords of partially opposing and understand why this decreasing volume is going to favour that forward reaction. And it's to do with the partial opposition in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Um, so that's why I just kept on writing until it felt right there. But clearly, four marks, four clear distinct points. Two of those basically statements as to what's happening, um, and then the other two are your justification and backing up your points with the theory that you've been taught. And in this case, because we're dealing with percentage yield, um, trying to increase percentage yield, where our theory is about the Chatelier, so which is the partial opposition of any change. Um, and that's question four done.